In The Mandalorian, which is part of the Star Wars universe, a lot of cutting-edge VFX technologies and wizardry were used. But what if I told you that amidst all this complexity, there was one little secret technique slash object that helped filmmakers to fake lighting and bring unparalleled level of realism to the screen. And now, it wasn't a lightsaber or spaceship, nor was it a complex VFX technique to make objects look amazing. But simply it was all about using flat objects known as gobas. One of the most notable examples would be in the fourth episode on the farming planet of Sorgan. The Mandalorian meets Cara Dune inside a location called the Common House. If you look closely at the background, you might think it is just a regular set with natural lighting. But well, not exactly. According to one of the cinematographers behind the show, the lighting work was done with the help of a single hard light source with a gobo between it and the common house miniature to emulate the natural daylight that is breaking through the walls, which naturally added a lot of realism to the shots. So what are these gobo's objects exactly, how are they created, and why is this ancient filmmaking technique still used today to fake lighting? In the world of VFX, lighting is an essential element that can make or break a scene. It can convey mood and emotion, and even enhance the photorealism in a shot. However, achieving the perfect lighting conditions on set is not always feasible. And that's where the art of faking lighting comes into play. Since the early days, filmmakers have used various techniques to simulate natural or artificial light sources either on set with the likes of reflectors and light sources, as well as post-production techniques that can be employed to manipulate the lighting further. But those workflows can be challenging, expensive or time-consuming, and to avoid it, lighting artists often rely on gobas to create the illusion of light due to how effective it is. They are typically small circular discs that are made from metal or glass, and they feature patterns in the middle. When placed in front of a light source, these patterns are projected onto any surface or stage, resulting in a shadow that resembles the design of a gobo. These patterns can range from logos, real-life objects such as trees, to abstract designs such as the famous Batman signal. For instance, in the first iterations of the Batman movies, as we can see in the footage, it was made by putting a bat symbol in front of a powerful light source to project the signal similar to how gobos work. Gobos also found their way to CGI and are frequently used in 3D software, but rather than discs, they are 2D texture maps that are applied to the surface of a 3D object, usually a plane or as a light texture, which serves the same purpose of real-life gobos because it is a waste of resources having a mesh in a 3D scene whose sole purpose is casting a shadow. So other than that, why do we use gobas to fake lighting? Well, the answer could be divided into two major sections. The first one is that by using gobas to project patterns or textures onto a surface, lighting artists can create unique and immersive atmosphere that helps to set the tone for a story since different gobo patterns can trigger various emotions and moods. A good example of this would be The Annihilation Movie, where according to Rob Hardy, the cinematographer behind it quoted that they wanted to achieve a trippy atmosphere that felt real. And part of that was achieved with the help of gobos because according to him, one of the properties was to make camera flares look strange and unnatural. And that was achieved with the help of a Roscoe X24 XFX LED projector, which used to springs colored gobos to create a rippling lighting effect. Gobos can also be used to mimic the appearance of natural light sources, such as sunlight or moonlight, which can be difficult or impossible to achieve, especially indoor using green screen sets, and knowing that, in a lot of cases, the recorded footage would be composited and mixed with outdoor footage. In CGI, the process of creating gobos is quite simple. You choose an image that you want to use as a basis for your gobo, then convert the image into a black and white silhouette or a PNG with a transparent background. So you can use software such as Adobe Photoshop or GIMP to do this. But if you want to save time and efforts, and if you are using Blender for example, then this add-on called Gobo's Light Textures 
is gonna be a great option. It offers 90 plus assets that include textures with animated leaves which cast a realistic look to your renders. In Blender, these gobos are gonna be a collection of like textures that you can import into your asset manager and drag and drop into your scene with just few clicks. The library is divided into 9 sections or categories which are abstract, caustic, cloud, forest, geometric, grid, leaves, windows, and animated leaves. Generally speaking, faking lighting with gobos is a fun and creative technique that offers a multitude of advantages in lighting. Two of the biggest benefits of using gobos are their flexibility and cost effectiveness, in addition to saving your efforts. They also provide the ability to easily switch between different patterns or images, allowing artists to create the perfect atmosphere for any scene. For example, imagine you are designing a light for the BFG, the fantasy movie from Disney, and you need to create a magical forest scene. You can use gobos to project an image to different trees and branch onto the filming set, and you can do this instantly, elevating the quality for the audiences watching the giant world of the movie. And you can do this without breaking the bank by spending money and time with other less practical methods. Furthermore, consistent lighting is crucial in making an impactful and immersive experience for any story. It sets the mood and enhances the atmosphere as we previously mentioned. And to make sure that the lighting remains consistent throughout the production, gobos are often used for that because they can generate similar lighting regardless of the external factors such as changes in the surrounding lighting. Also one thing, in The Last of Us Part 1 for example, there are cinematics where gobos were used to fake window lighting, and they were able to position the characters in any area of the environment they desired. So if you noticed, even though it is a video game, the same logic applies similar to movies and animations. Because there are cases where characters and objects would have to be positioned in particular areas of the filming sets. And to keep the shot consistent compared to the previous ones, gobos can be used for that. On a side note, there are a few advanced tips to be aware of to get the most out of gobos. First of all, by combining or layering multiple gobos, you can create a more detailed light path. This not only enhances realism, but also adds visual interest. Additionally, adjusting the distance between the gobo and the light source, as well as trying another angle with light, can change the projected pattern to create a more dynamic result. So, it's recommended to experiment with different gobo angles. On top of that, there are many different types of gobos available. So, you can experiment with different gobos to see what works best for your scene. So, generally speaking, while using gobos is an ancient but still relevant technique in the world of filmmaking that allows filmmakers to fake lighting types and different types of effects, and even though they might not be at the forefront of productions, it is still a cost-effective and efficient alternative to achieving desired lighting effects, whether it be on set or using a 3D software. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you are new, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this one. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.